Constructing your life is about much more than just building a bank account. Each week, join real estate entrepreneur and mindset coach Austin Linney as he interviews guests who are constructing their dream lives and impacting the world around them on a daily basis. If you're an entrepreneur or wanting to start a business, or you just want to hear motivating stories of how others have overcome the odds, you are in the right place. And now for your host, Austin Linney. Guys, welcome back to Construct Your Life. This is Austin Linney here. I have the honor of having, you know, he used to be the most dressed, best dressed man in real estate. He has since, uh, uh, he, he has more of a, uh, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? A transitional re- uh, attire. Yeah. You know, uh, you know, you can't let you can't let your tenants see you wearing suits all the time. They might, they <laughs> might, they, <laughs> they might not try to pay their rent. But I will say this: the nicest guy in real estate, officially, mm. Mr. Mr. Grant Warrington. How are you doing, sir? Good, man. Hey, uh, first of all, what a great introduction. I appreciate that. But I, uh, I really want to say thanks for having me on the show, dude. The show is fantastic. Always had, always has been, um, love you. And I, I just loving this chance to be on here. So thanks. Wonderful man. dude. Happy to have you, man. You know, um, you know, you shared parts of your story through, through social media and kind of the transitions that you take. And I know some of it, but I don't know all of it. So, um, you know, what I like to do with my guests is kind of let them tell their story wherever they want to start it. And then we'll kind of go from there. Sure. Yeah. I can, uh, I can just jump in. Um, you know, what, one of the things you touched on, you know, the, the dress too, like, that's so funny. Cause, uh, you know, I was in construction my whole life. And I, when I was 19 years old, I was, uh, I was a crane operator is it actually, it's called an oiler back then. It's kind of an apprentice, let's say that. And, uh, I, I was getting a coffee at the coffee truck. Right. And, uh, it's at nine 30 and I saw this iron worker and, uh, he was an older guy and he had a tie on, which is, if you ever know what an iron worker is, they don't wear ties. Mm-hmm. And, uh, it was crazy. And I'm like, I wonder, I wonder what this guy's wearing a tie for. And uh, somebody asked him and he said, uh, I just, today's my last day. I retire today. And I always wanted to know what it felt like to wear a tie to work, you know? And I thought how cool. And it, it's always been this, the same thing with me is like, I I'd love to be able to wear a suit and a tie and feel what that's like. And, and it's awesome because I had the ability to do that. Um, when I quit my job. And that's, that's kind of, uh, you know, why I went that route. I wanted to be so business professional and it suited me and I loved it. And now I've just made some shifts I'll get into. And, and now I'm back to more business casual. Yeah. And, uh, well, I call it, uh, I'm just going to come up and make a word right now. I call it business attitude, right. And not business casual. Right. And, and so, <laughs> business of, sport is what I call. One, yeah, I like one it. of the one of the things, and, and this is this is inter- this is a real conversation. Yeah. This is actually a real conversation, guys. For anybody that's listening, that I would have with anybody, and me and Grant would have this off camera. Yeah. Um, I have a lot of clients who, uh, let's say, they're going through drug addiction, or they're yep. losing some weight, or they're they're CEOs. A lot of my guys are CEOs of companies, and we spend most of our time talking about how they feel about themselves. Mm -hmm. So then it shows to their employees, right? And you're telling a story with who you are, how you operate. And one of the things that I could do better at, this is, this is definitely the thing, you know, we're in an RV now, um, but I have a lot going on. So I try not to think a lot when it comes to, you know, I wear a lot of the same things over and over again. And uh, you know, my, my fiance is like, Hey, you know, that's great but you're also like a coach who coaches millionaires. So like, maybe you should like, I don't know, just like lose some of that, sh- you know, and I know, I know like you're comfortable wearing that. And so it's definitely been something yeah. that I've been thinking about and I've lost a lot of weight. So I was kind of waiting till my weight kind of like leveled off. But, um, I remember reading this story, uh, a long time ago in the beastie boys, he wore a suit for 30 days straight. And wow. like he was wearing it in the, in the studio. Right. And then one day he ran out of suits and he was wearing track suit and nobody would listen to him. Yeah. And he was like, he was like, Oh, he's like, yeah. okay, there's power behind the suit. So <laughs> yeah. remember guys, you know what they always say to me. Right. And I didn't expect to go that long in this topic, but remember yeah. what they, they always say to me is, well, I don't, I'm not trying to impress anybody. And, and I get that. Mm. But how about you impress yourself? 
Yeah. Good point. No, that's a great point. And that's, that's, um, you know, I'll, I'll get back to your original question, but, um, I, I you know what I want to hear. I really when agree with that. You always tell the story. Yeah. I can't remember all the details, but you were sitting somewhere and you were working a job. Oh yeah. Yeah. And you made a decision. Yeah. So I'll jump into that. So, you know, it's, first of all, it's my wife and I, Monica, uh, 50% partners on, on all our real estate. We always have been, um, you know, she, she's out there killing it today. Um, so it, it's, it's a 50% partnership, but, you know, back when I had a W2, I was a construction worker 24 years. And, um, what would happen? I, I be, I started working for the union and I was a business agent or an organizer. Um, but I worked right for the union. I wasn't running a crane anymore. I wasn't out in the field and, um, I had a great job. And what happened was I was asked to do something that I just didn't agree with. Okay. Um, I just didn't agree with it. And I said, I'm not going to do that. I was told not to do that. And, uh, by a police officer. And I'm like, I'm not going to do that. I'm just not. And it was, uh, it, there, there's so much more to it. So you can't just draw down the line, but it just, I said, that's just not what I'm comfortable doing. And, um, you know, they said, okay, well go drive over to Starbucks. My, my boss is going to meet me there. And, uh, and I, I'm like, shit, dude, you know, I mean, you know how it is your boss, you, you know, you're in trouble. They're going to come bitch at you and who knows what's going to happen. I mean, I could lose my job. And I'm like, shit. So I'm sitting there in Starbucks. I'm waiting for my boss to show up, me and another guy. And I'm like, what's going on here? Well, my wife and I had 11 units at that time. We, we knew we eventually wanted to get into you know, real estate full time, but I'm, I'm sitting there. This is my career, man. I'm a third generation operating engineer. You know, My dad, my grandfather. So I'm, I'm sitting here going, what's going to happen? So as I'm waiting for my boss to show up, um, my mentor... You know, I, I did in, in the real estate, mentor in the real estate world, my other life, we didn't communicate all that often, but we would every few months. And I was just sitting there and all of a sudden I get a text from him and I'm like, well, that's odd. I hadn't talked to him in months. And it was a picture of a check and it said my biggest check ever. And the check was for $625,000. And I was like, dude, I'm in the wrong place. I, I got to go. And that's what I tell people. I'm like, I got to go. It hit me right then is like, I got to move. I don't know how, I don't know what I'm going to do, but I am in the wrong spot and I got to get the hell out of here, dude. And I knew it right then something clicked and I could never get it back. And I didn't ever want to. And I thought I'm, I got to go. And I just figured, let him come in, let him bitch at me, let them all do what they need to do to me, but I'm gone, dude. But I didn't know how. But it's funny thing about that. Once you make the decision, two months later, I was working for my mentor who had become my boss. Now I quit my career W-2 job, gave up my pension, gave up a company truck. Um, I actually had two pensions. Um, I gave all that up to go follow my dream in real estate. And uh, that check really was, was what did it. And it just opened my eyes. It was incredible. You know, people are not not motivated. They're not, not smart. They're not, not hard workers. Mm -hmm. Here's my theory, uh, especially, you know, dealing with uh, communities that I have and, and other people. So I think they just don't know that it's available. And when you see what you can, what's possible, or you get around people of what's possible, yep. it changes you. It, yeah. it, 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 it molds you like, like perfect example. He's a client now, which is funny as shit. But I met this young kid uh, who's a land investor who's fucking smart as shit. Hmm. And we were exchanging some shit on DMs. And like, I kind of told him my plan. This was like my first year in the coaching. And he like listened to my plan. He was like, oh, yeah, that's cute. And I was like, what? And he's like, oh, yeah, we did $3.5 million this year in coaching. I was like, excuse me? Hmm. And he goes, and he laid it all out to me. Like he's got two coaches underneath him. He's got a person that runs it. And he was like, Hey, um, how about we bump those goals up a little bit? <laughs> and it was like, it was like the first time I actually talked to a coach Yeah. That like, he's like, Oh yeah, no, no, you gotta go bigger. And yeah. I'll never be the same after that, that breakfast. And yeah. you know what? I wrote some asinine goal out on a blackboard 
And it was the, it was the scariest number I've ever written. It actually came to me during a massage. Wow. Like it was a whole thing. Yeah. You know what? I had no idea in six months how I was going to get there. No, yeah. no idea. But it just happened. And I hit yeah. it by 2000 over. <laughs> wow. That's incredible, bro. And that it's like, cool. but, but like what people don't understand in the story they haven't heard is two days before I wrote that goal down, I lost my biggest client. It was wow. my lowest month ever. Wow. And I had an opportunity to crawl back to where I was going. Yeah. Or to charge forward. Yeah. That's incredible, dude. And now here we are, right? And so, yeah. you know, you made the decision. You say, I'm going to leave pensions and great jobs and company yeah. cars. And, you know, where do you go? Where do you go from there? Where, where, where does the story go from there? Yeah. So, there, what the beautiful thing about that is it, it showed me that I can quit my W-2, um, which I, re, you know, I did, I did get into another W-2, but it, it just broke that mindset of, you know, I had healthcare. That's the other thing too. You know, I, I had healthcare, I gave up. So my whole career, right. I'm seasoned to think like, dude, you can't give up your pension. You can't give up your healthcare. You can't do this and that and that. And then it was like, no bullshit. I can. So that was what was huge for me. Um, but what happened was then I became the director of operations for uh, a property management company uh, for my friend, my mentor. Um, and I oversaw eight with our, with our units, a uh, little over 800 units in Southeast Michigan and Northern Ohio. And that was for about eight, 16 months, I believe I did that. Um, and, and that was just huge too, because then I'm around larger apartment complexes. Um, you know, the largest one that I managed um, or oversaw was 144 units. So during that time, we bought a 20 unit apartment building. That was our first building, my wife and I. So when we bought a 20 unit, I mean, you know, I, I'm overseeing these large apartment buildings. I think 11 total, I was, I was overseeing the largest 144 units. Um, it was no big deal, man. You know what I mean? Cause I was in that space. That's what I was doing every day. We had systems down already. Um, and my mentor was great with it. He's like, Hey, here, you can, you know, use what other systems we have for yourself if you want. So, I mean, we hit the ground running. It was, it was fantastic. But, but the one problem we ran into was time. I just, I ran out of time. It got to a point with the property management that my phone rang and I looked at it. It was my mom. And I'm like, if I answer this phone and it's a 10 minute conversation, that's 10 minutes. I'm going to have to work longer on the back end. And I'm not going to get home till like seven or seven 30 tonight. And I'm like, I can't, I can't answer it. And then everyone quit calling. Like my mom's like, I know not to call you during the day. And I got to thinking, I'm like, that's bullshit. You know what I mean? For me, for me, not, not for everybody, but for me, that was that I, I thought I should be able to talk to my mom during the day. Um, and you know, I, I've always had that entrepreneur mentality. So it's a little bit different, right? So I, I think differently about things. So I just thought that's just not that's not right. I, I should be able to have that. I need to put myself in a position where I can have that phone call. And that's what happened. And um, I'll tell you the truth. It was Monica, my wife, who um, it was like, I, I forget what month it was, but she said, listen, this is what we're going to do. Cause I was stressed to the max too. She said in 11 months, you're going to quit your job and we're going to save and we're going to get prepared for that and quit your job with no other income except for our rentals. Um, and then every month we just kept saying, okay, 10 months, nine months, eight months, seven months, holy shit, it's getting closer. Wow. This is scary. And then, uh, I, I think I gave him, uh, a, a four week notice, my mentor, cause I wanted to help. I wanted to stick around. I didn't want to shock him. I did a lot there. Um, so, but it was crazy. I quit my job. I had my, my, uh, realtor, uh, I'm, I'm a realtor in Michigan. So we thought, well, we'll just pick up some of the slack with that. Um, I think we had like 27 units or so at that point, um, but it wasn't enough to live on comfortably. So we just did it. We quit. And then that showed us, you know, it's like, wow, it, it's like three years later now, we're still here and we're doing, we're doing even better. We've added two more apartment buildings. Um, it's just when you have the time and quitting that job brought me into other situations where I was able to find those two apartment buildings. If I hadn't quit my job, I wouldn't have been able to, uh, to 
to buy those other two apartment buildings, um, which was incredible. One of my clients, she wanted, she, you know, I was t- uh, bringing her around looking for houses. And she said, you know what? The market's just crazy. I just want to buy my house I'm in now, my rental for my landlord. Would you talk to him? She said, by the way, he owns apartment buildings. And I said, yeah, I'll do that. We had just refinanced a 20 unit we bought. So we had $300, a check. You know that check he said, 625000 the biggest check, he, right? We just refinanced a 20 unit I bought that, that her and I bought. And we got a check for 300000 So that was our biggest check, three hundred grand so far. Uh, it's just cool to see this shit come around, right? And now here I am holding that check going, wow. Uh, you know, so, but, but that led me to the second building. The third building was on the MLS that led us to that building. And it's just all because we quit that job and I had that time. I was able to find those buildings. So what we're going to do here is we're going we're gonna to walk through some steps. Okay. So you're here, you're sitting now, you have three apartment complexes, all those things have happened positively, yeah. even though there was hardships. Yeah. So first step, what advice would you give to the guy in the union job? Um, it would depend. I, I would say be the best you can be no matter what, no matter if you want to sit there and, and, and work and that's who you are, be the best you can be. Because here's the thing. I don't care if you work at McDonald's, if you show up on time, Every day, you're willing to work, put the time in, whether you're the union guy or you're the McDonald's employee, pretty soon, you're going to be the manager. You're going to be in a higher position. They're going to, it just, life rewards people like that. So that's what I would say. But if, if that isn't you, right, if, if you're going, I need to do something different, which 99% of the people say anyway, just 98% of them don't do anything, I would say start educating yourself. I went on bigger pockets in 2014 and I started, uh, we, we decided to buy a rental and that's how I, uh, that's how I learned Brandon Turner and Josh Dorkin were doing the podcast and, and that's how I learned. And luckily we had built up to 11 units. We built up to that before I quit. So we had that, we built it, like they say, build it before you need it. And that's what we did. We had 11 units. So we had just enough to stand on and just enough knowledge also to move on to my next job as a property manager. So we did build it before we, we, um, we needed it. So, I mean, my advice would be do something and do something continually every day over and over and over, um, to get, to get yourself out of that situation, if that's what you want. Mm -hmm. And then ultimately, I think my bigger issue in in kind of uh, fed up is not the right word, but just kind of over the excuses, you know, there's a lot of people out there that are claiming, that they want this new thing. They want that thing, you know, or they, or they want that change, but I'm just not, I'm not seeing the follow through. I'm not seeing the work. They, they're, they're, they're almost wanting it without the grind, you know, or like yeah. without any knowledge. And, and the thing is, is like, it's really easy to uh, get fast cash, right? Like you can get yeah. fast cash on moral, you know, uh, without values, you can, you can do this transaction, you can do all these things. And one of the things that I'm really drilling home with my clients these days is like 90% of the problems that exist for you, if it's in business or in life, is you have unequated expectations on an improper time horizon. (laughs) Yeah, It's as simple as that. If I were to tell you that this attitude that you have where you yeah. work hard, you network with people, yep. you buy undervalued assets. If you did that for 20 years straight, mm-hmm. there's no chance you wouldn't be a millionaire for the arbitrary, yeah. ridiculous fucking number, right? Yeah. But if you tell me that you want to hit that same goal in two years, you might have a little problem. Yeah. And so nobody's yeah. looking at it. Like all the companies that I'm building are 50 year companies. And to be yeah. honest with you, they're probably bigger because if my kids take them over or my partner's yeah. kids. So Ask yourself, simple question. Do I have proper expectations on the, pri- on the right timeline? That's it. Yep. If you don't, then you recalibrate those, readjust, and then get to work. 100%. Yeah. And am I willing to go through the bullshit to get there? Because it's, you know, it does suck. Um, you know, seven years. Th- now we're really starting to see the fruits of our labor. Um, because when we bought these, we bought these properties with no money. And um, we always had to refinance to try and purchase the next one. And it, it just, 
very little. I, I, we, on our first single family home we bought in 2000, let's say it was December, 2014, uh, we ran out of money. Um, you know, and now we're at 41 units and we continually did that with just leveraging, doing whatever we could to make these happen. We, we bought houses on credit cards, uh, personal loans. Um, I sold my truck, my boat, my pool table to put a down payment down on a house. Um, we've done everything crazy we could do to get these, to get these loans, to buy these houses, to grow. And that's just something we were willing to do. And when you do that, they don't cash flow. Awesome. Right. Like they cash flow, but it's not like what you think. We're not cash flowing $600 a property. Right. Um, so that's what happens. And then when you buy these apartments, you have to take your, your cash flow and you have to rehab out of your cash flow. So, you know, we might own back then we owned these buildings, but we were taking the money that was coming in and we had to continually rehab these properties. Now that's starting to, to change. And now we're seeing a little bit, uh, uh, a lot, a lot better issue, but I'm telling you, man, I was, there was times, there were some really bad times. I'll, I'll tell you about the one time. Um, it was probably 2015 or 16. We just bought three houses. We were buying them in bulk, um, three at a time. And then we rehab them, refinance them, giant burrs. And, um, we put a blanket loan on them and go out and buy three more. And, um, I was sitting in Lowe's parking lot. It was December, 2017. Uh, I have it in my phone every year. It goes off uh, the camp, my calendar reminder at that time, because I was sitting in Lowe's parking lot and I just was bawling. It was raining. It was a, it was a work night. I was after work. I was picking up material for the rehab and I was just bawling. I'm like, is this worth it? Is this really worth it? I got a good job. I got here. I am busting my ass. You know, and I drive down the streets and look at look at the houses and look in the windows and everybody you see everybody's TV on and it's like what the fuck am I doing out here, man? You know what I mean? It's like here I am, dude, busting my ass and everybody else is just relaxing. And so I'm in that parking lot, just just I just had enough, dude. It was like a breakdown. And uh, I said, you know what? In in a year from now, I'm gonna remember this and I'm gonna look back because I'm not gonna quit. I knew that I'm not going to quit. So let me put a reminder to the grant in a year from now. And when my, and I'm sitting there putting that reminder in there to me in a year saying, this is where you were, this is what you were feeling. And then I asked myself, is it worth it? And I put that reminder in my phone and every year it goes off every year. I've said, I'm not sure for years. I said, I'm not sure, but I remembered, I remember how I felt. And I remembered I'm doing better than that. I'm doing better than last year. I'm doing better than last year. And then this year, this December 17th was the first year I even did a post of it on Instagram that I actually said, yes, it's worth it because now we're starting to see cash flow. Now we're starting to see some different things in our lives. And uh, it was just crazy though. But I, I did that. I did do that, but I made that commitment. I'm going to do this until the day I die. I don't care if I don't make a dime. This is who I am. And this is what I do. When I'm 80 years old, I'll be a real estate investor and I'll be doing this. So I took that doubt off the table. There is no quitting. This is what I am. This is what I do. There's no falling back, going back, doing any of that. It's going forward. This is what I do no matter what. But uh, that, that was a tough one. There's been a lot of moments like that. So getting back to it, that that's the point. Are you willing to go through that and accept it? The nice thing was that I had my mentor and I could look and say, he bought one single family house. Now he's got a plane, a helicopter, lives on the water. Um, he's like 38. And it's like, it's got to work. Monique and I would be like, is it going to work? And we'd be like, it's got to, it, it works. It's working for him, you know? So, and that's what we did. You, we just found somebody that it was working for, and we were way behind, but we just, he said, here's the steps I took. If you want to be uncomfortable, if you want to have some sleepless nights, here's what I did. He said, I don't recommend it to everybody, but here's what I did. And we said, you know what, we're going to follow it. And we had all those uncomfortable sleepless nights. Um, and it's, it's been completely worth it though. hundred percent. My, my dreams and my hopes and my goals are not negotiable. It's not mm -hmm. even, and, and, and the thing is, is like, I think, I think that we live in a society where we want to point out 
everything that we that we can do or, or the negative parts of who we are, right? And, and so I, I said this to a client today, think of my makeup, my skill set, my mental makeup, my health uh, as my own personal mind map. And every day I take an assessment in my mind of areas that I need to improve on to add on as a CEO, as a fiance, as a, as a brother, as a son. This week, what's the book? What's the podcast? What's the friend? What conversation with a friend that's going to get me to where I need to go? And then I'm constantly always approving that. Right. Mm -hmm. But I also know myself and I know that I'm more me, just me. I am more responsible to other human beings than I am myself. Yeah. And so that's why I have to build companies because my need to support them and their families and create a life for them actually fills me up. So that's what I'm going to go do. And so when I stepped into this space, real estate, I did what everybody thought you should do. I bought the single family house yeah. and I ran the Airbnbs and I did all those things. And thank God I did those things because now I know I don't want to do any of those fucking yeah. things. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Now, yeah. here's the mental shift though. It took yeah. me doing enough personal development to realize that I had the skill set, which is what I want to do anyway, which is put people in a room, find the right operators, get yep. them money and let yep. them go do the work. Yep. But you also have to sell to yourself that that's work. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know, like, yeah. you know, I have a CEO that running a huge company that I need him to go play golf. And he's like, so you're fucking telling me to go play golf. Yeah. I'm telling you to get away from your employees. Yeah. Like you've built the algorithm. You have the relationships, like go away. Yeah. Like, I know that's like mentally hard for you to understand, but I need you to like thinking, I need you to be like, where's, where's the company going to be five years from now? That, if yeah. you're not doing that, then you're not doing your job. Yeah. But so then it's like a secondary thing of like, well, I don't feel like I deserve to be out on the golf course. So, you know, like there's all yeah. these like complex layers, but that's by doing the work and investing in yourself and, and finding where you, where you see, like one of the things that I think you're great at, is like, you love these like how to videos Yeah, and you get a huge response. Yeah. Like, because like your, your brain works that way and you see it and you go through. And so like, you know, you found a video tactic that works for you. Yeah. And, and, yeah. and you've leaned into that instead of trying to be the boisterous, loud, you know, outgoing guy. Like you're just yeah. like, no, I'm, this is what I love. I love the process of the apartment buying slash, yes. fixing, you know, and, and, and people can resonate with that and then move forward. Yeah. And that's, you know, one thing for me too, there was always a lot of like, I'm not going to be the guy that's going to tell you, you can go on bigger pockets and learn how to buy an apartment. You can learn how to buy a single family home. You can do like, there's so much out there, right? On that. That's great. My thing is what happens when you buy an apartment? What then, right? Where's all that information? And that when we were buying our apartment, it's not out there. There's not a lot out there. So what I'd like to do is I like to make videos and say, Hey, flooring, we use Sherwin Williams for our flooring, and people go Sherwin Williams. Yeah, they're one of the largest flooring distributor in the United States, and they're that. all over the United States, right? So, no matter where you're at in the United States, if you're watching my video and you find out about Sherwin Williams, you can contact their flooring department and say, "Hey, it, whether, you know, if you have enough units, and um, and they'll do your flooring. You can't beat their pricing." But those are little things that. We had to find out. And I'm like, where are those videos? Help me out with paint color. Like, I don't want to go in and we do everything the same, but it took hours and hours and hours of us figuring out paint color. We use agreeable gray from Sherwin Williams. There you go. Um, it, it took us hours to figure out what the paint, best paint color was, the best flooring click or glue down. Um, you know, it, it just took me hours for this stuff. So it's like, why not? Why don't I just make videos? If you just bought a 10 unit, a 20 unit, I mean, here's some good content. Watch some of these videos. Here's what we did. Here's what we do. Here's why we do it. And um, it just made sense to me. I'm like, yeah, I'll just put these videos out. I mean, I'm not the most handiest guy and I don't do any repairs anymore. There was a minute there I was trying to get in it uh, and, and be the, the maintenance guy. Um, but my friend, um, Jamie Gruber said to me, um, you know, are you trying to save money or are you creating money? 
by being the handyman. And I said, I'm saving money. I'm not creating it by any means. So that's when I got out of that process. But, you know, all these little videos, I, I like to show people like, here's how simple it is. And the beautiful thing about apartments is once you master one, you know, 650 square foot, one bedroom apartment and everything that goes on inside of it, and you got a 20 unit building of those same things, it's the same thing over and over and over and over and over again. So our scope of work is the same. Uh, it, it just becomes simple and easy to deal with once you, once you do that. That's why I love apartments, you know, houses are all different, different square foot, different configurations, and these are all the same. And I love them. And that's why I love them. That's great. See, now I'm text my partner, right? When we get off this and be like, Sharon Williams, we're about to do a remodel on the house. I'm like, yeah, Dude, here we go. You know, yeah. it's like every day you learn something new and I love yep. that. And, and, and you're hundred percent right. Like once you fix you know, one of the joys of apartments, you know, mm -hmm. joys, we'll use that word for the negatives, yeah. but one of the joys is, yeah, you're right. It is the same building. Yep. You figure it out a couple of times and then you go and rinse, repeat the model. And like, call it my hubris twenties, but as I get older, um, I don't want the sexy anymore. Yeah. Like I'm yeah. only starting businesses that have a market cap that has no ceiling. Yeah. I'm only getting into businesses that we have a full runway of whatever it is that we want to do. That's why I'm looking at title companies. That's why I'm looking at blockchain title companies. That's why I'm looking at all the stuff that exists that never going to go away. Yeah. You know, and even I have my own qualms about Airbnb because it's the thing and it's mm -hmm. so sexy and it was everybody we talk about, but we're actually going to go a different route with it. Um, because I see the sexiness that people are buying. I can cash into that through value creation, right? And so uh, I, I read a book called The Psychology of Money from Morgan Hazel. And he said, the number one issue with you is, is that you think you're special. <laughs> and okay. he said, you know, you, when you meet, uh, let's, he was using traders, like, like Wall Street traders. He said, you're looking at that guy because he's invested in said thing, right? And you're saying, yeah. oh, he's wrong. But you have no idea how his money's, how he has his money, what's the time horizon on his money and all that stuff. So like uh, somebody said this to me the other day, they were like, man, you know, we were really uh, like jealous and envious of said person who has, you know, 50 units, right? Yeah. In yeah. Ohio, right? Yeah. And I'm like, yeah. And that's like a hundred bucks a unit. I'm like, you could have two Airbnbs in Austin and make double what she's making. Yeah. So does it matter? And, and I was like, don't just because it's a unit count or a thing like all money is not created the same. Yep. Yeah. And that that's another big thing, too, that, um, you know, I, I had to get over that to myself, like just speaking on unit count where, you know, I would look at people, like you said, and be like, wow, they got a thousand units. Right. And then I'm like, well, wait a minute. They've been doing this for 20 years. I've been doing it for seven. Right. It's like, how, how can you equate yourself to these people? when they've been, they put in much more of the work than I have at, at, at this point. So I, I think that's a, that's a great point to that. No. And ultimately, even from a coach point of view, like after this call, I have my coaching group and it's with 10 coaches. We're on certification number two. And sometimes, cause I'm a newer coach, mm -hmm. newer, since a lot of these people, sometimes you have to get in the room. So, so this is, this is guys, I'll share you a little secret. A lot of times the guys that I'm partnered with, let's say they're new to a certain space. I have them go take a course or I have them go to a, a mastermind or, or something. Right. Mm -hmm. And, and they go, why'd you, why'd you send me in there? Cause that you could tell me all that information. Mm -hmm. And I go, yeah, I could, but that's not why I sent you. In there. Well, why do you think I sent you in there? And I'll let them like think on it. And they're like, Cause you wanted me to see that I'm no different than the guy hosting that thing. Uh, yeah. And I go, exactly. Cause if he can do it, you can do it. Yeah. But it's not until you get in the room. You know, I remember when I went to yeah. Jake and Gino event, really changed my thinking. We went and we were in Nashville and this guy had had 300 units and they bought a 1,257 unit portfolio and they asked him like all these nerd, you know, multifamily nerds were like asking all these stupid questions. <laughs> and he was just like, they're like, he's like, look guys, we just did it. 
Yeah. He's like, he's like, I don't know what to tell you. Yeah. He's like, my dad had some financing background. We said, fuck it. And he's like, we just, it was a good deal. We bought it. He's like, and then we figured it out from there. And he's since gone on to buy like 2000 units since then, it may yeah. be more now. And it was, it was, it was the mindset to say, Hey, we just fucking did it. Like we didn't yeah. know we didn't have the skills, you know, but like, that's where like relationship building, getting the people like, you know, your yeah. you know, network good, like, you know, having those people in your, in your network, you can just lean on their, their expertise. Yeah. And it's, you know, that, that network is huge to me. So, you know, I, I was going to networking events. I love networking events, but it, it just, it, when you keep going to the same ones over time, and if you're growing, right. Like I, we own 41 units and people were like wanting to talk to me and I'm like, whoa, me, why? And you know, I guess I had the most units or whatever. At the, and I'm like, that's great. I love helping people, but that doesn't help me. I need to be around people that have a lot more than me. Mm -hmm. So, you know, the last event we went to, I went with my, my mentor, I called him. I'm like, Hey, are you going to the apartment association of Michigan uh, event? It was at an airport up in Pontiac, I believe. And uh, he said, yeah, I'm taking my helicopter up there. Do you want to ride with me? I said, yeah, hell yeah. We used to drive in a car to these events. And now I met him at the, at the airport by his house. We jumped in his helicopter. We took his helicopter up there. And it's funny because we, we flew in his helicopter over our 20 unit apartment building. And he's like, Hey, look, there's your apartment building. And it was so surreal for me because you, when I used to work for him, he had a smaller plane and we flew in his plane over his apartment buildings. And he was saying, look, there's, there's my building. And now we're flying in his helicopter and he's pointing out our building. And I'm like, wow, it's just amazing. When you do this shit, it just, like I said, we're just following in his footsteps. Right. And it's like, how amazing. But I, I get into this room with these apartment um, investors and it's actually a hangar. They were showing their jets. A couple of guys had their jets there and uh, we landed in a helicopter, like I said, and it's just amazing. And I'm like, dude, I need to be in bigger rooms like this. It, it Just the feeling and the people that were you know, there, like the one guy owned 3000 units and he's like, how many units you own? I said, 41. He said, great for you keep going. This is the best thing I ever found in my life to do. So keep going. Where do you get encouragement like that? Right. So Never. it's like, yeah, I, I said, I need to be around, around guys like this. So that's when I, that's when I joined Go Abundance, like yeah. four or five months ago, because I needed to get in bigger rooms. And that was my problem. I need, because now I'm in those rooms and I'm having these conversations and I'm having conversations that I'm like, wow, these are like high level conversations even above where I'm at. And I'm like, that's so great. I might not understand something right now, but I'm around it. And I'm, it's just incredible to get around guys that are doing a lot more than you're doing, you know, cause then you start speaking the language you start. It, it's just in, and in the past we had, we had done that and got around some, some people doing bigger things and it makes it easier. Like when I say $10 million to you, you know, you're like, yeah, okay. $10 million. Right. Yeah. But when you first start out in this, you're like ten million dollars. Oh my dude, god, dude! You know? Screw that! Like, screw that! My partner just told me today that <laughs> he's like, "We're gonna run a billion dollar fund." And I'm like, "All right, so it sounds good. Let's yeah, go." Hey. Yeah, like, and I and I agree with you. Yeah. And it's so interesting that and I'll go back to my one of my first comments. Like, until you get around options, you don't understand. That it's all relative, and 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 I think what's interesting in in, in the mild success, uh, you know, because I'm just a humble guy, but the mild success that I had this last, oh, yeah. you know, nine months in my coaching business, yeah, I realized one thing very quickly: mm -hmm. it doesn't matter. Yeah, it doesn't matter. Like when I had the month that I thought I would never fucking have in my life yeah. ever, like yeah. my mind couldn't even wrap around it. I go, I look around and I go. All right. Yeah. Like, and then you're like, okay, it doesn't fucking matter. Yeah. And so if it doesn't matter, well, then what matters? Okay. What matters who I am, what I'm doing with, who I'm doing it with, what projects mm -hmm. we're working on. And you have to allow yourself. And this is, this is where I've gotten to personally. If it's not going to scare the shit out of me, I don't want to do it anymore. 
Yeah. Like, I mean, That's like, good. I no offense to anybody else, but if it doesn't make and, and, and apologize for anybody, if it doesn't make my ass sweat. Yeah. If it doesn't scare me a little bit. Yeah. You know, I, I don't really want to do it because it doesn't. Here's what it doesn't do by going lower. It doesn't mm-hmm. allow me to work with the people that I want to work with. Yeah. Simple good as that. Point. I never even thought about that till I just said it right there. That's a good point. Yeah. Because when your opportunity is small, you're only going to be dealing with smaller people. But by yeah. launching yourself up in this bigger realm, you get to employ or partner with the people that you want. Yeah. And it's the same thing that Alex Hermosi said about his business. By charging more for whatever you do, yeah. allows your business the oxygen to operate in a space that it should, not shouldn't. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. And so meaning that, you know, we as entrepreneurs and people that sell services are trying to skimp on everything, but by skimping, you can't provide the value that you need. Like I just brought on a person to work with me who's a very skilled HR director, uh, assistant, uh, basically number two. My clients are only going to get more value by having her in my team, not less. Now I might have to charge a little more to afford her, but I'd rather make the decision now, right? And that's what I tell my clients all the time. You know, this decision that you're making is, are you running a $1,000 business or a $100,000 mm-hmm. business? Yeah. You know? And so, you know, we have to reinvest in ourselves and our business and we have to know that there's something more, but like, by ex- you know, I, I, I coach a couple of wholesalers. I don't even know how, but I coach a couple of wholesalers, which is hilarious because I've never wholesaled anything. And yes, they might be making a lot of money, but they're mm-hmm. stuck in yeah. an unwinnable game. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they can't get off the, the treadmill. And yeah. They're fucking like, I, I'll do anything. Right. But here's the problem. Then their ego and identity is tied up into that money. And to lose it, they'd have to rebuild who they are. Mm, yeah. And so like, if you start from that, if you, if you really live in who you are and you're, and you're building from the place of value, then you don't have to worry about, you know, you can just start there. And like, I, one of the things I respect about you is that you uh, are a hundred percent who you are. There's no smoke okay. and mirrors. There's no BS. Like you're just, this is what I do. I may not be the fastest one there, yeah. But I'm yeah. going to, I'm going to steady the shit out of this thing. Yeah. We just beat it into submission. Exactly. Like, and there needs to be more of that out there instead of, uh, you know, racing around and just trying to do everything. Like, yeah, I, I feel you very tactical. Like, and maybe that's your wife that keeps you like keeps the lanes on. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. No, I, I, we, we work really well together. Yeah. Um, my wife and I, I mean, we, we do, um, it's phenomenal. I'm very fortunate. It's, um, but yeah, that's, uh, yeah, we, we, you know, we've grown. I like to say we've always grown at our own pace. We've, you know what I mean? Um, we're, we aren't the fastest, right. But we've always grown where we needed to, right. We've figured out, okay, we're done with single families. Let's move on to small multifamilies. Um, and then we figure out, okay, small multifamilies are a lot of work. We're self-managing. We're doing all these things ourselves. Let's move on now. We're moving on to we put a team together and now we're looking to syndicate um, larger complexes. So we've always, we've, we've grown and, you know, people ask, well, what would you do different? And I'm, I'm always like, well, I don't really know if I would do anything different because I've, we've grown at our own pace. Right? You, you've given each stage of the journey it's the respect that it deserves. That's a great point. That, that is, which exactly is, which it. is not done ever. You know, everybody, you know, I was talking to my clients today. Like if I, Grant, if I were to tell you that I'd be right fucking here, having this conversation with you, building the businesses I have two years ago, I would have gave you everything in my bank account. Yeah. But yet we're fucking here and we don't enjoy it. You're right. 100%. (laughs) It's like, this is what you asked for. Yeah. You know, but, but by respecting each level and knowing that there's always another one, then you're, then you're immersed in said level, giving it the attention that it deserves. Yeah, cor- correct. Yep. hundred percent. And knowing that with each next step is going to ask, it, that's really where it is. And we'll leave it at this. It's not that you don't have the skills. It's that each next step is asking more out of you. Yeah. And you don't know you as said person, meaning me or whoever yeah. doesn't know if he has another gear. 
Yeah. Right. Yeah. Cause like the hundred unit department, yeah, it's going to be less managing, but it also takes yeah, a lot well, more responsibility, yeah. more money, yeah. you know? And so like, we have to like check if it's, if it's a skill set scenario or it's, yep. it's what we're asking of oneself. Yep. For sure. I love it. So if people want to follow about what you have going on and all your stuff, how would they do that? Um, you can follow me on Instagram at Grant Warrington. That's probably the best way. Um, I'm on YouTube too, Grant Warrington. Uh, but Instagram's the best. If anybody out there ever wants to have a conversation, I offer a 30 minute free phone call. You can go to Instagram. The link in my bio will take you to that. You can schedule a 30 minute free phone call. We can talk real estate. If you feel like you're stuck in your real estate investing, maybe I can just uh, have a conversation, listen where you're at. Maybe I can help you out. Um, and it's a free phone call. So, <laughs> you know, I, I encourage people to uh, take me up on it. You know, if uh, do it, see if take I can them help. up, guys. Well, yeah. guys, we appreciate you all. If you got any value from this, send it to a friend, share it with somebody, and we'll see you next time. Thank you for listening to Construct Your Life with Austin Lenny. If you enjoyed this episode, be sure to rate, review, subscribe, and pay it forward by sharing with a friend. Most importantly, take this opportunity to start constructing your life by taking immediate action on what you learned. For show notes, resources, and more information on one-on-one coaching with Austin, visit constructyourlifepodcast.com.